नमस्ते प्रणाम गीता ध्यान ओ पार्थय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणन स्वयं व्यासन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणि भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वामुसंदा भगवद्गीते भवत्षिणी ओ भगवद्गीता विथ विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ गेव एनलाइटनमेंट टू अर्जुन The ancient sage Vyasa included it in the Mahabharata. O goddess, showerer of the nectar-like knowledge of non-dualism contained in your 18 chapters. O my affectionate mother, the destroyer of rebirth, I meditate upon thee. Now, Krishna Vandana वसुदेवसुतम देव कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु ओ सन् ऑफ वसुदेव द स्लेवर ऑफ कंस एंड चाणूर एक्स्ट्रीम डिलाइट फॉर मदर देवकी ओ लॉर्ड कृष्ण द सुप्रीम टीचर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स माय सैल्यूटेशन टू यू so we take up the reading of 30 uh, third shloka of karma yoga shri the third adhyay of shrimad bhagavad gita shri krishna is continuing his teachings further sadrusham cheshtate svasya prakrute rjnana vanapi prakrutim yanti bhutani निग्रह किम करिष्यति नाउ श्री कृष्ण इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द लॉज ऑफ लाइफ पर्टेन टू ऑल इंक्लूडिंग द ज्ञानीज द एनलाइटेंड वंस एंड द अज्ञानीज द इग्नोरेंट वंस श्री कृष्ण से इज सदृशम चेष्टते स्वस्याह सदृशम इज इन अकॉर्डेंस चेष्टते एक्ट्स स्वस्याह ऑफ हिज ओन प्रकृते ऑफ नेचर इनहेरेंट नेचर ज्ञानवान वाइज मैन अपी एंड और इवन इवन द वाइज मैन श्री कृष्ण से इवन द वाइज मैन द एनलाइटेंड वंस दे एक्ट चेष्टते सदृशम स्वस्याह प्रकृते ही they act in accordance with their own natures everyone each one of us has our own nature right uh, whatever we are we are and we act according to our nature that is the basic reality we all act we as the moment we take birth the moment we take birth the lord also gives some some uh, a typical nature to each individual so a gnani an enlightened one even an enlightened one he acts in accordance with his own nature that has been given to him and so also prakritin yanti bhutani therefore since even the enlightened ones they act according to their own nature prakritim yanti bhutani all the beings likewise all the beings they also follow their own nature an enlightened one if you tell him to do anything wrong it will never be possible for him because he has to act according to his own nature likewise all the beings in this nature in this universe in this creation they also they act according to their nature and therefore nigraha kim karishyati and therefore nigraha is restraint kim Wow, what 
Karishanti. What will any restraint help others? What will any restraint help those who are asked, uh, I mean, uh, that, that don't follow your nature? What is the use of telling people, don't do like this? So this is actually the 33rd shloka that Sri Krishna has told, is telling Arjuna in connection with the earlier shloka that Sri Krishna had told that don't deviate those ignorant ones with the knowledge that don't get attached to the work. Don't get entangled to the work. The ignorant ones, if they are working, let them work. Let them be active. Let them remain active rather than being idle. So Sri Krishna says, even a wise man, a wise man behaves in conformity with his own nature. All the beings follow their nature. What shall restraint avail? What good will restraining those uh, individuals, all those people who are following their nature, what will restraining them have any good effect? It won't have. So, don't restrain. Let them do the work rather than sitting idle. Don't keep on, uh, you know, uh, uh, telling them constantly, Work without any attachment. Work without any attachment. I have given my advice. Those who want to take this advice, don't work with any attachment. They will happily start following it. Those who don't want but still get remain engaged in the work, let them do that way. Because a day will certainly come when they will realize the importance of my teaching and there will be a paradigm shift in the thinking of these ignorant ones who are busy with their work in their own way. Fine. So don't deviate them. Now some plants grow tall and slender while others are shrubby and stout. Some fruits taste sweet while others bitter. It is all everybody's nature. It is everybody's nature and the way everyone is built by this creation, everyone will work in the same way. The varying natures in vegetation cannot be changed, but they can be augmented and enriched. A bitter god will remain bitter. It won't become sweet. But by using the right kind of spices, you can still make a beautiful, uh, delicious preparation out of that bitter goat and enjoy the dish. Bitter goat, you cannot, uh, you cannot, uh, you know, just uh, alter the DNA uh, and a genetically modified bitter goat with sweet taste. You may do it in lab, but that is going against the nature. Sri Krishna says, don't change their nature. Everybody has his own nature. Like the enlightened ones will follow their own nature. All the beings will follow their own nature. Variation in nature is much more pronounced in the human than in the other species. Such a great variation. Each one of us, no two human natures are alike. All the human natures are different and all the human beings, they follow their natures. Dispositions are divergent even among the enlightened. Even, even the enlightened, we see the different personalities. We see different personalities in the enlightened ones. And when while on this, I am remembered of one beautiful, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the example that uh, Sri Girish Ghosh used to quote while talking about Maya. Girish Ghosh uh, used to tell that there are two people whom Maya cannot bind. And who are they? Swami Vivekananda, a wonderful son of Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother Sarada Devi. And another wonderful child, Nag Mahashe. 
Sri Girish Ghosh uh, used to give example of these two. Swami Vivekananda, a great scholar, a great, uh, great intellectual. Girish Babu used to say, his aham is so big, so enlarged, that Maya is not able to capture that aham in her uh, grasp, in her net. It is so huge. The, the, the uh, advent of uh, Swamiji, Swami Vivekananda, his teachings, his personality is so huge. The Maya cannot bind him in her net of delusion. And another example of Nag Mahashay, Sadhu Nag Mahashay, a wonderful devotee of Sri Ramakrishna and our Ma. His ego is so small that the moment Maya throws the net of her delusion, this ego just vanishes from that small holes of the net. The Maya cannot delude these two extreme personalities. Swamiji is stalwart of Vedanta, Advaitic Vedanta. And Nag Mahashay, humble, most, uh, most humble, most obedient, most devout child of Sri Ramakrishna and Ma. Maya could not capture these two in her net. Totally diverse personalities and all enlightened ones. Look at the case of Swami Adbhutananda, Latu Maharaj. Absolutely ignorant. He couldn't read and write. Absolutely uneducated. But look at his spiritual stature. Look at the uh, philosophical uh, principles that he used to teach disciples. He used to teach the devotees with. A great, even a great uh, learned man won't reach that level won't reach that level of competence of sharing those philosophical truths. This unlettered, this uneducated child of Sri Ramakrishna and Ma. So that is what uh, happens that each man is born with his own tendency. So <clears throat> dispositions are divergent even among the enlightened. One is an introvert, another is an extrovert. Swamiji, a great extrovert. A saint is given to devotion and a sage to discrimination. The yogi disciplines the mind while the man of action lovingly serves mankind. Attaining perfection in their thread or is their thread of unity in the midst of mental variation. All these great saints, they have their own peculiar natures, but they teach the same teaching. Maybe with the varied approaches, we find, we look at their teachings to be different, but no, in reality, all the great saints, all the great children of the Lord, they teach the same teachings. It is like Sri Ramakrishna says that uh, uh, the, 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 the teachings are different, may appear to be different, the path is the same. Like in the case of various yogas, the Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, paths may look different, but ultimately all these paths, they take us to the same destination. Each must be allowed and encouraged. Each person, each being should be allowed and encouraged to evolve in line with his or her temperament. So what if they are different from us? So what if they are different in their thinking from us? They are following their way, but they will also reach the destination. The earthly among men are bound fast to things mundane. Obstructing their worldly ways avails nothing. You don't just don't keep on telling people, don't get attached to the work. What Sri Krishna had told in the previous uh, shlokas. 
inducing them to evolve in tune with their nature aids their growth. Rather, you tell them, work, work, work. Instead of telling them, your approach of working with attachment is wrong. Don't do that. Don't get attached to the work. Don't get entangled in the work. Don't tell them. Rather, you, you support them. Do the work. Do whatever is good. Do whatever is good for you. And then a day will come when they will also realize how to remain unattached, how to remain detached and do the work. Uh, Swami Chidbhavananda Ji has quoted here uh, an, a, a, a happening in Sri Ramakrishna's life. An individual complained to Sri Ramakrishna that he found it impossible to turn his mind Godward. He was so much attached to the worldly life. He told Sri Ramakrishna, I cannot do it. I cannot take my mind from worldly enjoyments and put that mind onto Lord. It is not to me. It was asked of, of him as to what was the thing or being that he loved most. Sri Ramakrishna asked him, fine. You cannot put your mind to God. It doesn't matter. What is it in this world that you love the most? You tell me that. Then the man pondered for a while and said he was inordinately attached to a goat that he reared. You look at the fun. Look at, look at his worldly attachment. That man, that devotee, that disciple, he thought for a while and then he said, Oh, my mind is most attached with my goat. My goat is everything for me. Then Sri Ramakrishna suggested him one thing. That a suggestion was then made to him. Think of that goat to be imbued and with divinity and meditate onto it. Meditate on goat. So what? So what if you, your mind is attached to goat? Sri Ramakrishna never tried to dissuade that man. Don't love your goat. Don't uh, get attached to your goat. He never dissuaded that person from attaching his mind to the... Rather, he said, think of goat to be divine. So what? Yes, you, you, you are so much attached to your goat. See divinity in the goat. And then the man did so. The man followed this advice and had his mind slowly turned Godward, even by attachment through that goat. Because what happened? That goat just became a medium for that man. That goat just became some kind of a medium to fix his mind. And a day came when the God, the, that man even started seeing God in the goat. He slowly turned Godward. His mind slowly turned Godward by constantly fixing his mind on that goat as divine being. So that is what happens. That is why Sri Krishna says that everybody follows his own nature. The enlightened ones and even the ignorant ones. Everyone follows his or her own nature. So what shall restraint avail? What good will restraining that person from doing that way be of any avail? What good it will do? It won't do any good. So rather, turn the way that person is doing his activity. If he's attached to God, fine, let them think divinity and God. And then a day will come when his mind will turn towards divine, towards the Lord, towards the God, towards the Mother. That is Sri Krishna's teaching to all of us in this shloka, 33rd shloka of the Karma Yuga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Krishna Arpanamastu Jai Sri Ramakrishna Jai Thakur Jai Maha Jai Swamiji